Hey, what's up guys? Gonna do a uh, little gear review on these pens, these takedown pens I got from uh, bladeups.com. Uh, the description box will uh, have a link if you want to uh, go right to the page. They offer all kinds of different pens though. Um, but these, like I said, these are the takedown pens. And as you can see, I have two of them. They're both the gray. They also, um, they come in with a black um, finish on them if you do prefer black. But both of these pens have black ink cartridges. How they work is they just uh, twist. You can see right now when it's fully locked down or closed, I guess you would call it, the uh, the tip's out so you can write with it. But uh, if you unscrew it or back it out a little bit, that tip retracts in. Okay. Um, even though I have two of them, I've been using the one for a while now, and the issue I had with it was that um, on the inside, this is the newer one, you can see there's an O-ring. Okay, that O-ring keeps the pressure when you're actually screwing this down or whatever. When that's in the body, it rubs on the inside of the body. Okay, they create a little bit of friction, so it's not so loose, doesn't make any noise, anything like that. This is the one that I've been carrying for a few weeks now. And I, I made it part of my EDC carry. Every single day I had it, I had it clipped into my pocket on my right side next to my knife. And um, this one, uh, when I first got out of the box, there wasn't enough uh, lubrication on the O-ring and eventually the O-ring actually um, just tore from the friction. So you can see this one here does not have an O-ring. It still functions the same, it just turns a little bit easier. And uh, because of that, I did actually have this uh, come apart in my pocket one time. There was one day where I went to get my pen, and uh, just from moving around, it happened to come loose, and that the uh, front portion had gone in my pocket. Okay, and this was still clipped to the back of it. So I would definitely say that um, if your O-ring does break on you, you should replace the O-ring. Uh, they don't come with replacements or anything, but they're easily found at hardware stores. So what I did with the second one here is uh, out of the box, I uh, put my own little uh, lubrication on there to keep it um, to keep it lubed up so that it's not going to have that extra friction and bind up and eventually tear. So this one, I'm, I'm starting to carry this one instead and so far it's been perfect. It stays, um, you know, stays put in the pocket even when I'm moving around. Uh, it doesn't turn. So I think the O-ring on these are uh, pretty important to have. Um, but anyway, let's take it apart real quick. Obviously you can see it's two pieces, the body and then of course the uh, the front portion here. These come with a standard no-name um, ink cartridge which is uh, black, it takes uh, black ink. But um, if you notice the back of here, that kind of clicky type end, that's shaped like that for those clicky pens where you click them on and off. But you can use uh, any ink cartridge uh, for this, any kind of refill. Now if you do prefer the uh, Fisher Space Pen inserts. Sometimes if you buy just the insert itself, like in one of those cardboard packages from like Staples or any kind of office supply store, Office Depot, anything like that, sometimes they'll come with this separate backing that you can pop onto the Fisher um, insert so you can get the extra length you need. Now you don't necessarily need that, uh, that style on the back because it's not a clicky pen, you know, it's just um, uh, twisting. But you do need the um, the extra extension, okay, for length. But in other words, what I'm saying is that uh, you can use Fisher Space Pen inserts in this, but you have to get the package that has that piece, okay, just for uh, just for your information, in case you uh, do prefer those. Now, I do prefer those. I like Fisher Space Pen inserts. No, not because I really need to write upside down or I need to write in freezing weather or all the other advantages you have with those cartridges. They're just a lot smoother. But thus far, I have used this actually quite a bit and uh, it's been working out totally fine. Um, this is actually uh, the spare I've been using for my uh, my checkbook and uh, some other things around the house and the ink's been fine. So the ink cartridge you get with it has been fine. It has not clogged up or leaked or anything on me. But uh, like I said, if you're one of those people that just, you know, once you go Fisher, you don't go back. You like those ink cartridges. They're just they're really smooth um, and really reliable. You can actually use that in this pen if you wanted to. But anyway, uh, the pen is uh, very comfortable. Once you use it, you can see there's grooves cut in here, kind of a teardrop shape. There's three of them. And uh, your fingers kind of lock into that when you're ready to write. So uh, I do like that quite a bit. Pocket clip, uh, as far as carry, has been great. There's enough pressure on it where it keeps it in the pocket, but it's not super tight to, uh, to get in and out. Uh, overall, I think it has a pleasing look to it. It's kind of a tactical look. Now these are tactical pens because they can be used as a uh, you know, Kubaton or uh, impact device. 
Now, most people will think, well, I can use any old pen to stab someone with if I really needed to. And although that's true, um, these are a little bit more robust. Now, some of these models actually have a point on the end. In other words, the other end comes to a point uh, for a little bit better, I guess, penetration if you're going to stab something. This has kind of a blunt, uh, shallow rim here on the end. It's hollow. So that creates, you know, a nice... I, it's not necessarily sharp, but um, it creates a nice uh, nice edge that will actually break skin. And if you really wanted to, I wouldn't because I do carry it in my pocket and my, my own hand is exposed to it. But if you wanted to, you can get a, um, a stone and actually sharpen this edge up a little bit so that it'll tear into skin a little better. But I personally wouldn't do that just because it, um, there's a really rare chance I'll ever have to use this for defense anyway. For me, I got these because I think they look cool. They're just really nice to go with my other gear. And, um, and that's pretty much it. There's no real reason other than that. Now, like I said, you could take a, a you know a 25 cent big pen, and yeah, you could stab someone with it, but more than likely it's going to just snap or break in half, which you don't want to happen. God forbid you ever actually do have to stab someone with a pen <laughs> to defend yourself. You certainly want to make sure it's not going to break. So there is a lot of interest in tactical pens, and uh, like I said, it's, it, there's nothing super special about these, except for me personally, I like the way they look. They're a lot more affordable than, say, what Benchmade has to offer as far as pens are concerned, or um, even even Surefire pens, you know, you're talking hundreds of dollars. Uh, and, of course, you know, you can get into to custom pens. I made a video about, about that before. You can get really expensive pens out there. But, anyway, I think these are pretty cool. As far as price, they're $21.99 over at Blade Ops. Like I said, they come in a variety of different uh, uh, colors and styles, the gray, the black. You have this blunt ring on the end or you can get one that actually has a nice point on it if that's what you'd prefer um, what's cool about the ones with the point is you can also use this you can double as a stylus now although not a lot of people have PDAs anymore if you have any kind of touch screen for anything even your you know your phone uh, you can use that to actually quickly you know access things on your phone or PDA whatever but um I think it was a really good pen like I said the only issue I had was the, that o-ring so I would suggest if you do pick up this particular pen um, either get yourself, go to the hardware store and get yourself uh, some spare O-rings, or just make sure you put, you know, proper lubrication on that. Um, something that's not going to eat rubber, either you have to be careful. Some, some, uh, like, metal lubes will actually deteriorate rubber, so you got to be careful. Uh, but most greases will actually work fine for that. Just make sure it's nice and lubed so it doesn't get dry, because once it does get dry, it'll tear when you go to, to turn this, and that's what happened to me. And then, of course, like I said, it got loose enough to the point where... It was actually falling apart a little in my pocket. But if you take care of it, uh, you shouldn't have any problems. Like I said, this one for me right now is just dedicated uh, for the house because I don't want to carry it because I don't want it falling apart again. But anyway, uh, overall length on this is 5 and 7 eighths inches long for anyone who's interested. And um, you can see it. I don't have the measurement on the uh, the width on this, but it's, it's kind of a chunkier pen. It's definitely wider than, a, say, a Bic. But um, pens I've seen get... It's pretty fat. I mean, it's not huge. For me, it's pretty comfortable in my hand. It writes very nicely, and I'm really enjoying it. There is a little plate here if you wanted to uh, have something uh, put on there, you know, like any kind of inscription or uh, engraving. So if you want to give this as a gift or something, that's a, a nice little bonus, although I'd say the majority of people who get this probably will never, ever do that. And you can see, of course, there's a takedown little logo there. So that's it, just a little review on these pens. Like I said, so far they've been working out great for me. There's a lot of great options out there for, for like I said, quote-unquote tactical pens that are more affordable. And there's some great people here on YouTube who are doing videos on those as well. Um, I'm also going to be reviewing the Smith & Wesson uh, pen that I got from JT. Another thank you for that, uh, Hell's Army. Uh, he hooked me up with the Smith & Wesson, which uh, I have not yet uh, tested. I've just been carrying these so far because I want to do a review for you guys. But anyway, I think they're great. Are they the best? They're not the best out there, but for the money, they're definitely a very good option if you're into that whole that whole tactical stuff. <laughs> but anyway, that's all, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.